Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to explore some powerful tools with Artisan 2 and I'm going to show you a very quick workflow to create realistic landscapes inside of SketchUp. Let's get started. The native sandbox tools are very useful when it comes to creating landscape inside of SketchUp. For example, you can create landscape from scratch or from contour drawings, and you have a few useful tools to add elevations to your landscape, create a building pad, and even add roads. But if you're a long SketchUp user, you know that if you try to add organic details, the sandbox tools have many limitations, and you'll likely need additional tools to take your landscape to the next level. And that is the point of this exercise to show you how to create a landscape like this inside of SketchUp using Artisan so you know that there are more tools available to reach this level of detail. So this is going to be our starting point to this exercise. The idea is that we have a house on a hill and the terrain slopes down to a street. And we're going to use a couple of Artisan tools to hopefully solve some landscape challenges that you may come across. So the very first thing we're going to do is to lock the perimeter of our landscape terrain because if this is part of a larger context model that the perimeter stays locked in and is not affected when we start to change some of the elevations inside our terrain. So in able to do this we're going to select our entire terrain and we're going to use the sketch plus selection filter to filter out the edges that are connected to one face. So enter a value of one here and pick select only. So now this is our selection. Next we're going to activate artisan select. Notice how in the corner it says that you are in soft selection mode. So you want to hit tab so you exit off that soft selection mode. So you want to zoom in on one of the vertices, right click and select the vertices only so we can deselect the edges and now we're going to activate the artisan crease tool to lock all of these vertices into place and actually prevent them from moving when we use some of the sculpt brushes as well as the smooth command now the smooth command will smooth our landscape without adding any subdivision and as i do this i want you to pay attention to the perimeter that we just creased so i'm going to select my entire landscape and as I click the smooth command, the landscape gets a little bit smoother, but also notice how the creased perimeter remains in the same position. With the sandbox tool, you're really just limited to the smooth tool to add elevations and you don't have any extra features to create an organic landscape. But with Artisan, you have a little bit more to work with. So now we can actually start to modify our mesh and add some elevations to the terrain. We're going to start with the sculpt brush. Now, before we start sculpting, let's review a couple of the settings. Here you can switch between any of the available brushes in Artisan. You can adjust these sliders to control the radius, strength, and detail size. And here we have a couple of more settings. We have lock boundary, which will allow the perimeter we just creased to stay locked in place. We also have smooth normals, which keeps a smooth surface between the normals in our surface. And we also have display edges, which is a toggle to switch edges on and off. And you can also see the difference with smooth normals. So you want to keep these settings in mind as you're sculpting your landscape. Here we can control the radius strength and the detail size and you will notice these adjustments with the blue and green circle on your cursor. For some important shortcuts you want to keep an eye on the status bar down here. For example, you can hold the square brackets or the left and right arrows while moving the mouse to adjust your radius. And similarly, you can hold the up and down arrows while moving the mouse to adjust the strength. And ideally, you want to keep your strength at a minimum percentage and expand your radius circle for a better control of the elevation. Now, as I click, I can begin to add elevations to my landscape. And as you start to add elevations, you can also press Ctrl to invert your elevation. And this is going to toggle between sculpting upwards with the green circle and sculpting downwards with the red circle. 
You can also hold shift to activate vertical displacement indicated by the red outline in your strength circle. And with this shortcut, you can elevate the landscape upwards. Another common workflow is to switch between different brushes as you add elevations and by pressing the Alt key, you can change to the smooth brush to help smooth out those elevated areas. So now I can sculpt these areas with a little bit more precision and detail by switching between the sculpt and smooth brush allows me to work a little bit faster, especially in the front and back of the house where we have access to stairs. These areas need to be a little bit more flat as they can become outdoor activity areas. If you want to see your landscape in a more interesting display, you can toggle off display edges as well as smooth normals and you're going to see this sort of unique style where you have more of a clean slate of how you're sculpting your landscape. Once again, I'm simply sculpting around the edge and then hold alt to smooth the landscape. When you start getting to the edge perimeter, remember we set this in the beginning so nothing moves. Make sure lock boundary is always on. And you'll notice that as I start to sculpt around the perimeter, that edge stays locked in place. And you can see that sculpt does a really great job in adding detail to the landscape. But whenever you feel that is too aggressive, you want to toggle smooth by pressing Alt to smooth out that landscape. And the advantage of having the perimeter locked in so it doesn't move with that, you can still add additional landscape if you want it, because this area becomes a connection point to the landscape. Let's activate the grade brush and you can tell that it looks a little different. You have your radius circle strength, but you also have a line that indicates the direction of the slope. And right now we are at a 10% slope or 10 to one. If we change that, we can type in a value, for example, 30% or 50%. And you can see how the green circle also changes. You can also type five colon one for five to one slope, which is the equivalent of 20%. So we're going to stick to 10%. Also pay attention to the shortcuts down here. You want to, to set the direction, you want to hold control. Make your first click while holding control and now we can set the direction. So I'm going to click all the way to this point and you can see now that that direction is locked in regardless of where my brush is. So now I can click and move in that direction and you can see that this gives me a very consistent slope. So let's repeat that again to create another downward slope to connect to the road. While holding control, we're going to click, point to the direction. So now we can click and slope our landscape in that direction. Once again, let's turn off display edge so we can see that a little bit better. So even if you look at it from this point of view, the landscape slope looks a little bit more natural than what you can achieve with the sandbox tool. And the landscape slope looks very intentional. So now we can start to refine this a little bit more by using the sculpt brush. And now we can hold Alt to smooth that in so it feels a little more natural.
So let's say I want this area of the landscape to be a lookout point. I'll activate the artisan select and I can press tab to switch between hard and soft selection. I'm going to stay in soft and I'm going to select these vertices. I can also use the arrows to expand my selection, but this right here should be fine. And now I can move this selection, these vertices using the artisan move. If I tap out, I can change the axis mode. And if I click, I can now move this vertice selection. And you can also hold shift to lock on that axis. If I'm in move mode and I hold control, I can move along the vertex normals and it almost feels like I'm inflating that part of the landscape. So I'm actually going to leave that here. But we can also move, use the make planar tool to move these vertices on a plane. Once again, I can hit alt to change the axis mode. I can hit tab for soft and hard selection mode. And I can use the arrows to lock plane to axis. So we're going to stay on the blue axis. And now I'm going to click and we we'll can see how the vertices just shifted. Once again, I'm going to click one more time and you can see how that's modifying everything. So now this looks completely modified. So here is my final result by adding some materials and landscape assets. You can create something really interesting. And just to prove that Artisan 2 offers a number of powerful tools that can help you design natural looking landscape inside SketchUp. So let me know in the comment section, what did you think of our result? As always, be sure to check the description for any useful links and follow us on other social media platform. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video.